Welcome to Educationally Speaking. My name is Sarah Davis, and I'm a communication specialist with Oakland Schools and the host of this podcast. The goal of Educationally Speaking is to focus on important topics related to education here in Oakland County, Michigan. In Oakland County, we are lucky to have a diverse community where many different nationalities are represented in our schools. However, many of these students need time to adjust to their new surroundings and life experiences after relocating from countries plagued by war, poverty, and food insecurity. And that is where Wassam Brico, Immigrant Student Consultant for Oakland Schools Immigrant and Refugee Services comes in. Wassam has over 10 years experience in the area of trauma and mental health and is fluent in many languages. He is sought after in Oakland County for providing consultation and resources for school districts and community agencies looking for guidance related to immigrant students. Also with us here today is Sally Nay Liu, Supervisor for the Department of English Language Learners at Southfield Public Schools. For 21 years, Sally has been a strong advocate for English language learners and often works with Wissam to connect her students to valuable resources. Wissam and Sally are both here to talk with us today about ways we can support our immigrant students in school. Welcome to both of you. Thanks for having us, Sarah. Yes, thank you, Sarah. No problem. So one of the things with Sam that probably makes you so good at your job is that you're an immigrant yourself and experienced a lot of hardships a student might anticipate when beginning school here in Michigan. Can you tell us a little bit about your story? Thanks again, Sarah. Um, I still remember the day like it was yesterday, a hot summer day in Baghdad, Iraq. The phone rang, I picked up and it was my dad asking me if I wanted to go to America. Now, at that moment, I really thought this was a joke. I really didn't believe him. But to this day, I can never forget that moment. I started crying out of joy, just thinking that I will be going to the greatest country on earth and live in America. We arrived to the US late of 1998. I was 14 at the time. I started high school as a freshman here in Oakland County in January of 1999. Now, even though I was born and raised during two wars and witnessed many, many explosions, airstrikes, and destructions of Iraq, my trauma was nowhere near the trauma that some of our students have gone through before coming here. And so I consider myself lucky because it could have been much worse. I was bullied, harassed, made fun of just because I didn't speak a word of English, the way I was dressed, or the way my hair was done that day. The fact that no other students spoke Arabic and or Chaldean at that school did not help either. But at the same time, it really helped me learn the language much quicker. Now, I dealt with my trauma by keeping everything inside. I did not speak, talk, or participated in any school activity because I thought no one cared. No one offered to help. No one asked me how I was doing. There were no resources available for me to... Um, utilize. Uh, my teachers always thought once I learned the language, it would be easier for me. Now, I, I did speak the language. I knew the language. I just held everything inside. It was that trauma. Now, I started my senior year at a new high school, and I thought this was a new fresh start. However, two weeks into my senior year, September 11th happened, and it was freshman year all over again when it comes to trauma. Um, the only person really I could turn to was my mom. She was my guidance, my, uh, my advisor, and everything else. Um, I, I wish the school had more resources, uh, more guidance that I could have uh, utilized during my, senior, during my years in high school. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, a, what a story there. Um, I heard you mention that one of the main issues, you know, was obviously the lack of resources. So what resources would have been helpful to you? It would have been tremendously helpful to have someone that I opened up to at school. Someone asked me how I was doing, not just in passing. Sharing resources with me um, after school programs. Um, I'll give you a, a funny story um, about OTAC, Oakland Schools Technical Centers. 
I saw many of these kids would uh, leave lunch early and would go on these buses. And I thought I was under the impression that they would skip school or going home with the, on these buses. And I'm like, I got to get out. I want to I wanna leave, right? So I didn't know what that was all about. And I actually went outside and asked the bus driver, are you taking these kids home? Because I would love to go home, right? And he said, no, we're going to OTAC. But I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what that was or what it entailed. So I went to the main office and I actually asked, I said, what is OTEC? What, what, is, what are these buses doing? So she explained to me what, uh, what, what was, you know, Oakland Schools Technical Center. And she set up an appointment for me to talk to an advisor, a counselor at the time, for me to explore that. Now that was, I think, one of my best years of high school. I learned so much. Um, I attended Microsoft, the office, that Microsoft office and networking. It was tremendously helpful. I met my best friend. Um, and it's just, I wish there was more of that. Um, after school, I was, um, I loved soccer. Unfortunately, that high school did not have soccer at the time. Uh, I currently coach soccer and I know how sports uh, can be tremendously helpful when dealing with anxiety and trauma and that sort of things. So um, I always encourage kids to attend after school programs, after school activities, but yes, just sharing um, what was available at the time at, at the school, that would have been tremendously helpful. Mm -hmm. And Sally, do you find many of the students at Southfield Public Schools come in with similar concerns to that of what Wissam is describing? Absolutely, Sarah. Depending on the circumstances, the newcomers are coming from their trauma may differ. However, trauma is a factor for many immigrant families. Interrupted schooling is very common. For example, school may not have been an option for a family from El Salvador, Iraq, or Syria. A family fleeing violent politics needs, to, needs time to adjust to a new way of being. The experiences that the children face back home are never left behind. It continues to impact their adjustment to our school system and culture. And this takes time. Part of my job is to educate staff on what this adjustment process may look like in a newcomer. This is above and beyond the phases of language acquisition. A bell ringing or even a simple tap on the shoulder could trigger a stress response. These stress responses can often resemble obstinate and defiant behaviors. Teachers may often see anxiety symptoms like crying, stomach aches, or students even sleeping in class. Currently, Southfield is hosting learning remotely for all students, including our immigrant families. So we anticipate the adjustment period for these newcomers to be extended and their assimilation to our school system is likely to be delayed. So knowing what you know now, with some, what are some of the resources you really try to bring the local school districts such as Southfield? I made it a priority when I started at Oakland Schools back in 2012 to share my story in hopes that no student goes through what I went through. Uh, my goal is to increase awareness to our district staff, to educate about trauma, newcomers, immigration process, trends and data, and more importantly, all the resources that are available and how to access them. I've conducted many presentations at Oakland schools, districts, community agencies, universities, faith group centers, and many, many more to help educate our community and school staff. Sharing resources is critical, but more importantly, making sure that families know how to access these resources are more important, and especially to their social, emotional, and well-being of the families. I can always just refer a family to an agency, but we, you know, what if that family doesn't speak that language? What if they don't have reliable transportation? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? Um, you know, it's easier just to give a, a resource out, but it's harder, but at the same time, it's rewarding when you actually hear the story. Every story is different. Sally can attest to that. Every family is different. Uh, the same family might need mental health services, but one might have Medicaid, one might not, not, not have. And so just knowing the entire story, it's really easy for us to help. Some of the resources that we helped coordinate, backpacks drive, winter jackets and clothes, Thanksgiving, holiday programs, Christmas program, which is my ultimate favorite. And now we're, we're, we're um, 
we're in coordination right now of getting these Thanksgiving and holiday baskets, getting Christmas presents, and I feel like Santa. And it, it's, it's tremendous rewarding, um, you know, getting a present or a gift for that child. Um, translation services, health clinics, parenting workshops, and most importantly, mental health services and trauma services. And it, it's a combination of the two, whether it's providing the professional learning and the, um, and the resources. We have to understand where these kids are coming from so we can understand the full picture and how we can help them. Excellent. Yes, I know you do a lot of uh, good community outreach there because I also do the social media for Oakland schools and I'm able to post those positive pictures. Those are some of my favorite things to get and, and put up there. But um, Sally, can you further discuss specifically what resources WISDOM has brought to Southfield schools? You couldn't be more correct in your assessment of Wissam's value to our schools. I've attended his trauma workshops at Oakland schools. He is the person I call first for family resources, such as just recently, a Spanish speaking doctor. He's also the person I call to connect our families in crisis with resources, like he mentioned earlier just now. The most current example of this was the Samaritas this year as well. This faith-based organization helps new Americans with resettlement services, such as homes and jobs, and I would have never, ever known about this if it wasn't for Wissam. He has provided our ELL families with backpacks, like he mentioned earlier, gifts, food during the holidays as well. His connections are limitless, it seems. Awesome. Um, like you just said, it seems like a lot of these resources kind of come from partnerships within the community. Absolutely. You need a team to get things done. Obviously, I could have not done it by myself. Um, I need pretty much the collaboration and networking with all and any and all community agencies, donation centers, nonprofits, local, state, federal government, law enforcement, faith-based groups, businesses, Department of Health and Human Services, and many, many more agencies across the country that provide these social service uh, help. Um, keeping up with grant opportunities and ways to help other agencies by volunteering, coordination of services and resources. Um, taking part and being a member of many various meetings, such as the Southeast Michigan Refugee Consultation Group, Welcoming Michigan Steering Committee, Oakland County Welcoming Task Force, and many others, um, to get better knowledge and share appropriate resources and grant opportunities. You also mentioned community partnerships, but I want to highlight Oakland Schools' collaboration within which is very, very important to get the resources needed, like community programs uh, with our homeless consultant, Sarah Orris, uh, wraparound lead, Marisa Keels, as well as taking part of the EL advisory council meetings with our EL consultants, uh, Suzanne Tui and Christy Osborne, Steve Whitmore with the social work consultants, and our uh, truancy task force, as well as many, many uh, task forces meetings that we have here at Oakland Schools because it's one way to get the resources through my network. It's another to try to get these resources from every single consultant and from the school districts as, as well. When it's, you know, Sally at Southfield or somebody else from a different school district, we got to get everybody on board, try to get the resources out to the families. That's what, what we're here for. That's what I'm here for. And it seems like the community partnerships are so key because um, the students need are, are multifaceted. Um, this is definitely not a one-size-fits-all situation, and you have mentioned that many of these students have experienced trauma, which can affect their well-being as it relates to their learning. Many of our students, immigrant students and families, have been traumatized well before they make their way to the U.S. due to wars, natural disasters, killings, airstrikes, and so forth. Research also tells us that traumatized children cannot retain all the information that presented to them. Providing mental health resources is critical to our families. However, due to the culture and stigma that surrounds our immigrant families, many are reluctant to send their kids to seek mental health services. However, they are totally fine uh, with a school social worker seeing and talking to their child. And so we are constantly talking about trauma and what we're doing. And we're constantly talking about trauma and how it impacts our children, but what are we doing? Um, I've done many presentations where I invited trauma experts from Wayne State and U of M and other uh, local community mental health, but I, I feel like we need to do more and more to try to get these services. We try to partner up with these uh, services and agencies and university to bring these services to the classroom, to the schools. If that's 
how we can make uh, an impact, then we should do that. Sally, is this in fact what you have seen as well? And can you talk a little bit about how you work to make Southfield Public Schools a safe haven? Yes, and I'd like to say teamwork is what makes the dream work, right? So everything we sound was saying earlier sounds fabulous. First and foremost is the education of our teachers on this trauma. Southfield has offered training on trauma-informed practices district-wide. Our department also provides training on immigrant-specific trauma. We provide ourselves, we pride ourselves on our customer service, so to speak. Families call our staff at all hours when they, need, when they have needs. For many, we are their first point of support. It is 100% correct that school is a safe haven for students because it provides structure within what may feel like a chaotic new world for them. This becomes more challenging, yet not impossible in the virtual world. Just recently, our department was featured on a Channel 4 news segment on districts going above and beyond for students. Our portion covered the distribution of home learning support kits for our ELL families. We also support our families in getting online. For many, this would have been impossible without our direct support. Obviously, we had to follow CDC guidelines, but we made it happen in person. For a few families, this took multiple visits until they felt comfortable enough to engage independently at home. Our responsibilities to our families goes far beyond simple translations and language acquisition. All right, excellent. Um, with some, have there been any steps taken to deal with the trauma issue? I'm so glad you asked. It is my goal to start a trauma mobile clinic, teaming up with trauma experts, university staff, and district staff. We've made tremendous progress. This is a very large project, and we need everyone on board to get started. It was January of this year where I met with trauma team at Wayne State to talk more about the idea, and they seemed very interested having them on board. We also met with the county executive's office, the Oakland County Health Department. We've planned out three school districts that we can start with this. I will not give up until we have something in place, and now more than ever, and hopefully once we get through um, the COVID situation, we will have more and more, and we can start something in the near future. That all sounds very promising, and I hope that the mobile unit can come to fruition. Besides you, Wissam, are there any other places families can get resources to support immigrant students in schools? So definitely on our website, uh, because of the COVID-19, um, we've, uh, under the COVID-19 resources, it's right on our website. We've pretty much collaborated with every single person at Oakland Schools, try to get as many resources as possible, including the district staffs. Um, and we have pretty much, you know, translate, translated resources, everything else. You can also go on the welcomingmichigan.org website that has many community resources and support to try to get these resources. Um, feel, you know, you can always reach out to me, but I always encourage uh, parents and students to reach out to the school district. Um, I'm, every, every school district has someone as amazing as Sally in, in Oakland County and beyond. And I just wish I knew who my Sally was when I, when I attended that high school, but I'm truly thankful. I mean, really, it, this work cannot be done without people like Sally, without our EL and ESL coordinators, supervisors, and our consultants at Oakland Schools, because we try to get these resources out, but our teachers are the frontline, um, really, workers that are getting this information in and trying to assess and help our kids on a daily basis. So I thank them. I'd like to say that I'm very fortunate to know Wissam and have had met Wissam because he himself is the resource for me. One click of an email, a text, or a call, and he directs me who I need to talk to, where do, I, where do I need to go, how to get my resources. He is the point person for sure. We are very fortunate to have him at Oakland Schools. Yes, I, I think we all at Oakland Schools agree. Um, so thank you, both of you. We're going to have all of that information about how to get extra resources in our show notes. And with Sam and Sally, thank you so much for talking about this important topic. It's really necessary that all students get the resources they need to succeed. And I applaud you both for your efforts. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you.
This podcast was brought to you by Oakland Schools Intermediate School District's Communication Services and is produced by Media Production and Distance Learning Manager Mark Hansen. Oakland Schools is a regional service agency that offers support services to school personnel, which are better delivered regionally and provide cost, size, and quality advantages to those we serve. You can find more information on Oakland Schools at oakland.k12.mi.us. I have been your host for this podcast, Sarah Davis, and you can find this and future episodes of Educationally Speaking on Anchor FM. We hope you will join us for our next episode where we will continue to bring you topics that affect every student every day.